we're scratching the surface of the power of immersive technologies. The ability to connect people within virtual spaces, leveraging other technologies like artificial intelligence, I think we're going to see a significant transformation of workflow. Welcome to Startupville, the show where we discuss what it's like to build a tech startup in the startup ecosystem in a small city. I'm your producer, Ariel Delorier from Innovation Saskatchewan, sharing some exciting news with you today. Innovation Saskatchewan is responsible for implementing the province's innovation priorities and helping grow Saskatchewan's tech sector. Effective April 2022, this includes the operation of the Innovation Place Technology Parks in Saskatoon and Regina. We're with our host, Dan Gold, and today we're talking with the winner of the Startup TNT Spring Investment Summit, Mike Wazowski of Luxonic Technologies. Startup TNT is a community of entrepreneurs, scientists, investors, innovators, and startup supporters that gather each week. Their goal is to have fun, share stories, and build great companies. TNT stands for Thursday Night Tradition. Raising money is hard, and they've developed an outstanding program that makes it easy to invest in and receive investments through. Join them in Calgary, Edmonton, Saskatoon, Regina, and Winnipeg on Thursday, November 17th for the Fall Investment Summit finale. Find out more at StartupTNT.com. Keep listening as we talk with Mike from Luxonic about his experience with the Spring Summit, creating a healthy, positive, and effective work environment, and hear his story on how his team is changing the future of medicine by bringing virtual reality to the medical industry. Welcome to Startupville. Startupville is brought to you by Innovation Saskatchewan and Martin Charlton Communications. Mike, it's an absolute delight to have you back here on Startupville. It's a pleasure to be here, Dan. I'm uh, looking forward to this. So, uh, in essence, um, since the last time that we spoke, which was season one, season two? I believe so, yeah, season one or two. 70 or 60 plus episodes ago, there's yes. been a lot happening. So, uh, for those who aren't au fait or up to speed, tell us uh, the elevator pitch for Luxonic, and we will also provide a link back to the previous episode so that they can see how far we've come in this time. Fantastic. Um, so, at Luxonic, we develop immersive technologies for the healthcare industry. Um, our goal is to improve access to healthcare using immersive, like virtual reality and augmented reality. Our first product, uh, called Sievert, is a digital twin of the radiologist's reading room. So that's their main workflow tool. So Sievert is a platform that is transforming how radiologists learn, how they work, and how they collaborate with each other. So how have you found in the intervening time since we last spoke, how has that business development gone? How has product development gone? And importantly, um, when we often talk about the development of organizations over a period of time, how has your team evolved? Yeah, that's, uh, there's been a lot of growth since we last spoke, um, both on the team side, on the product development side. Um, the company has just uh, continued to grow over the last several years. Uh, on the team side, we're up to uh, about 20 people now distributed across Canada and even into the US. Um, our main team is still in Saskatoon, but we have people working in Alberta, Ontario, Newfoundland, um, Seattle, and I think our chief medical officer is right now in Qatar. So uh, even in the Middle East. So we have a, a growing team and that's, um, you know, our leadership team has has grown leaps and bounds as well. Uh, you know, when we spoke last, we I believe it was just my co-founder and I, uh, my chief technology officer, Arjun Puri. Uh, but we've added John Huffman uh, as a chief scientific officer. So John is a executive from Philips Healthcare, former executive from Philips Healthcare, and one of the fathers of digital medical imaging. Uh, so we're very fortunate to have him on our team. Our chief medical officer, Dr. Avez Rizvi, is a board practicing radiologist um, from the US, but now in the Middle East. And uh, our VP of immersive medicine, Dr. Shana Pandya, is based in Alberta, and she is a general practitioner, a 
a citizen astronaut candidate, an aquanaut, a fellow of the Explorers Club, and the list goes on. She's just an amazing, amazing individual. So, yeah, our team has grown, um, and it's uh, it's been fantastic to see, uh, you know, how the team has grown, but also to bring on these these um, very um, very special individuals. And of course, the organization must have evolved to be able to attract talent like this. So it's talent doing the work to attract even more talent to do even more work and that really organic growth. And now your footprint has clearly spread geographically, but being what I still see and, and, and I'm sure for you is being a Saskatoon, Saskatchewan success story growing outwards, mm-hmm. um, you know, for you, you know, I came to your facility, you know, walked in one room, desk, 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 put the VR yeah. goggles on, and it was just an amazing immersive experience. Um, but going from that one room to now being multi-site, what are the pressures or the lessons that you've learned with, mm. you know, from my experience, time zones, expectations yeah. on responding to things, um, you know, interpersonal relationships that sometimes, you know, we want to get this growth, but there are challenges that come to it in for, for founders to suddenly become, you know, effectively an HR person to handhold and steer and and guide people into these relationships and really set expectations how has that dynamic worked going from that one room to multi-site um it it certainly has had its challenges and and we brought on um you know john avez and shauna right at the beginning of the pandemic so that uh created extra challenges um it uh, I just met John and Aves in person uh, last year at the Radiological Society of North America's uh, big conference. So we've been working together for a year and a half before before we met. Uh, so it certainly had challenges. But I think with uh, telecommunications technology, with virtual reality technology, some of those barriers break down. And we were already starting to be a distributed team at that point. So transitioning into a fully distributed team now during the pandemic actually helped solve some of those challenges. I mean, there were bumps along the road, um, but, you know, we've instituted, for example, a daily check in with the entire team. Um, and, And part of that check in is an update on what everyone's doing so that everyone feels like they're part of the Luxon community, but also part of it's, we still do fun icebreakers and, um, you know, more of a get to know you sort of, um, meeting. And I found that to be really helpful in continuing to have a sense of community as we, as we, as we grow and, and stay distributed in a lot of ways. Something I've observed from a lot of people is that the pandemic actually turned out to be really um, a positive in a way with all the tragedy and the sadness that came with it, but a positive in a way in the sense that it forced a lot of organizations to think differently because previously, I mean, the mindset would have been, you're, hold on, you want to get everyone in you know, one room or one building and, you know, they can see each other and have cooler talk and, and, you know, be in the um, cube farm or cube farms frighten me, but, um, you know, the one thing in business that's always made me itch Um, or, you know, open plan office. And that doesn't work for everyone. And this really forced us our hand to go, okay, well, the choice has now been taken away from us. We now Mm -hmm. have to address this. And then I think, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think that the lessons we learn from that experience, we can then pick and choose in a time not in a pandemic to go, well, these elements I like, these interpersonal things that we implemented were great, and sure, mm-hmm. the months along the way. But actually now we're, we're far, you know, much further down the road to be able to go, well, actually, distributed workforce different time yeah. zones we're cool with it because we've you know we rode this out absolutely and i think you know with the distributed time zones 
Um, we've always taken an approach from the beginning of the company um, that it's more important that you're hitting your milestones rather than being at a desk nine to five. So um, we encourage our, um, you know, our team to have a life, first of all. Um, and if they need to take an hour to go and, um, you know, take care of something with their family, that's fine, right? We're all, we're all adults here. Um, and, and I've, you know, in my working career, one of the things that I really disliked was being told, okay, you have to be here 8.30 to 4.30. Um, no, you can't leave. This is, this is where you have to be for those. You know, I found it to be pretty inefficient. And I think we all sort of feel that way. I could be wrong there, but, um, you know, each person needs different things to be successful in their in their job in their career and being able to accommodate those needs and desires i think makes a strong team and makes a strong business yeah there's nothing worse than being a grown adult and being told you must not get up you must not do this your vacation mm -hmm. takes dot, dot, dot. it's like okay treat treat me as an adult and you'll be amazed yeah. how the productivity works and you know I, exactly. I've, been, I've been very lucky you know, I've gone in a career direction where, you know, I worked as as we'd spoken before. And for those who have watched the previous one, I worked in med tech previously. And mm -hmm. it was at that point, back in the 90s, um, <laughs> very regimented. And it was very hierarchical. Hierarch I always struggle with that word, but we're going with it. There was a strong hierarchy with, uh, yes. you know, consultants and then advisors. And then, you know, it, it, was, it was very clunky. But... Now I look at how med tech's working and, the, and I'm not saying there's beanbags everywhere, but there is an understanding that people can work differently. Those who want a more Absolutely. rigid environment work well in that and you offer that. Those who want a more flexible work environment who, you know, I get up at one o'clock in the morning, my brain's ticking. It's that thing of being neurodivergent. I'll work between one and three in the morning. That's mm -hmm. just who I am. Uh, and then, you know, it'll be a 10 o'clock morning the, the next morning, but because I've yeah. done one till three it's all good um i did want to ask you about your experience with the spring um uh, investment summit with startup tnt tell me yes. about what that was all about and um did you actually take your equipment on site for that one to demonstrate it? we did yeah yeah um so that was that was fantastic so you know we've bootstrapped as a company up until this year um we have a very active contract development side of our business. I mean, everything we do is still immersive medicine, um, but that's allowed us to get to the point of launching product on our own. But as you know, when you have product and you want to scale your sales, your marketing, um, growing organically isn't necessarily, um, isn't necessarily the best course. So we, opened up a small funding round this year. We had uh, a number of supporters from the radiology community who have been asking us for years to invest. And so our first, uh, first investment came from a group of uh, radiologists and medical professionals from the US and Canada. And then um, I learned about Startup TNT as part of, uh, part of this um, funding round uh, had had met Jesse previously, had heard a lot of fantastic things from from Mike, the other Mike W, uh, Mike Wolsfeld. Um, and so, you know, with a little bit of prodding from Mike, I uh, applied for the summit and um, it was a whirlwind six weeks, but it was it was a fantastic experience. And we were lucky enough to have, uh, you know, have been have been the winners of the summit. Um, so that was uh, a great boost. Um, you know, having the investment community really put money into the company, I think, um, validated a lot of the work that we've been doing over the last uh, five years, really. So I want to ask a question on this one, because previously you hadn't been involved in, in that side of gaining funds or from the perspective of spending that amount of time working on something which wasn't directly 
product development, but it was truly the business development, again, yes. in that funding direction. Um, do you think that there is, uh, having spoken to others, do you think that there is a resistance to taking part in programs like that in the sense of, well, it's unlikely that I'm going to win it. It's going to take too much time. Mm -hmm. It's going to distract me from what I'm doing. To allay those fears, and you must have probably gone through these thoughts yourselves. Yes. Apart from the prodding from from Mike Walsfeld, um, who we miss here on Startupville, but Ariel does an amazing job. So we miss him. Well, we don't miss him that much. Um, we miss him. We miss him. Um, yeah. But in the sense of how much prodding did it take from him to say, look, here's the shape of it. The impact is X. Did that allay the fears or the concerns about time lost and unlikely to get anything out of it, dot, dot, dot. And even for those who don't win it, you wouldn't, yeah. you know, you go into the mindset of this to go, well, I hope I do really well. But is yes. there also a mindset of what you can learn on the way that maybe you haven't thought about? Absolutely. Um, you know, we've been through several different types of accelerator uh, programs um, and they can be a time sink, to be perfectly honest. I think the value of Startup TNT is... Uh, you know, it's a relatively fast turnaround time. It's six weeks from start to finish. Um, and even if you don't win, you're building relationships within the local investment community. And I think that's priceless, to be perfectly honest. Whether or not we we um, had, uh, were fortunate, fortunate enough to win, I really value the experience and getting to know the community um, locally. Uh, I wasn't plugged into the community as well as I am now. And we have investors now who are, um, you know, helping the company in multiple different ways on the marketing side, um, not just putting their dollars in. Uh, there's also an opportunity with Startup TNT for side deals to happen. So even if you're not one of the winners, you can still get a side deal. Um, I think the other thing that uh, Startup TNT pushes you in the right direction um, to get ready for follow-on investments. So to get ready for larger investments, getting your data room prepared, um, you know, is is extremely important when you're going from the angel round to the venture capital round. And I think that um, giving you guidance on what venture capital is going to expect from you uh, is another sort of fantastic side benefit of um, of working, going through the startup TNT process. OK, blunt question. I expect yes. a blunt answer. There's a mindset with some founders where they are, we are bootstrapped, this is ours, we're not giving anything up of it, mm -hmm. dot, 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 versus the brain trust that you can lean into if you, even if you've to a small extent, uh, you know, uh, give out some capital in exchange for that brain trust and the networking opportunities that come with it. Blunt yeah. answer. Is there a point uh, in with some founders that you've observed, and obviously not naming any, where you just look at it and go, you're cutting off your nose to spite your face because you're not willing to give up capital to really grow? Is that something that you've observed? Is that something that you feared for yourself at one point? Yeah, I think, blunt answer, yes, absolutely. Um, give up capital. You know, don't try and hold on to your business for the sake of owning your business, uh, you know, 100% of your business or 80% of your business or whatever it is. The growth and acceleration that you will have by working with others, it's, it won't ensure success, but it's certainly going to give you a much better shot at being successful. You know, the idea of a lone founder bringing a company from nothing to a billion dollars, uh, it's, it's 
in my experience, not representative of reality. You know, we, we like to put billionaires on pedestals and, you know, there are a few that I think about, uh, in the public eye and all of those people needed help to get where they are today. No one did it on their own. So if you really want to take your company from nothing to unicorn status or even mildly successful, you're going to need help from people. So don't be afraid to give up your intellectual property or, um, you know, your, your equity in the company to do so. Just moving on to where that next step is for you and the organization. You've enabled this suite of tools where people can collaborate globally and consultants can really re work remotely and collaborate on, on, uh, on, you know, finding better outcomes and certainly with research as well. Um, when you look at the suite of products that you have and the ideas that are bubbling under the surface and the little book that might be on the end edge of the desk of things I'd love to get to at some point, but not quite yet. Yes. There's obviously a priority list of what you're dealing with now, next, next, and you know, there's a workflow to it. But if you Absolutely. were to go outside of that box directly mm. from, you know, everything's moving in the right direction here, we'd love to experiment as a side project or just give some resources to a thing without giving mm. away the IP at this moment in time. <laughs> Is there course. something that you look at and go, why hasn't someone done this yet? Uh, absolutely constantly. And that's one of my struggles is, you know, I, I, I'm often drawn to different areas and uh, whether they're in line with our development, you know, our product development or business development, or whether they're adjunct to it. Um, part of my struggle as a founder is to say, no, we have a direction. This is the direction we're going to go. Um, but to answer your question, I think we're scratching the surface of the power of immersive technologies. Um, the ability to connect people within virtual spaces, um, leveraging other technologies like artificial intelligence, um, I think we're going to see a significant transformation of workflow at the very least. I'm not, even though I'm in the field, I'm not necessarily a believer that we're all going to be in the metaverse in the next 10 years. Um, I think you have to have purpose in the products that you're developing and they have to solve a real problem. So for our product, for Sievert, we have an access to workflow problem and that's solved by this technology. We have a difficulty in communication and collaboration problem, which is solved by this product. Uh, without that, I would say if there were better technologies to use that we thought um, could solve this problem better, we'd probably be leaning in that direction. Um, but you have to have purpose and be problem driven in, in your product. So there are some, you know, areas where uh, medical imaging is used outside of radiology, right? For, for, in fact, medical imaging is used across the healthcare system, whether that's for pathology, for cardiology, oncology, those workflows are, are different than the workflow of a radiologist. So I think there are opportunities to customize workflows for other professionals in healthcare, um, while you know, expanding the applicability of our platform and solving different problems, but still within that medical imaging. Yeah. But inside you, as a founder, as a <laughs> problem solver, there is yes. still that magpie element where you have to discipline yourself. To oh, say, 100%. Ooh, ah, uh, mm. <laughs> let's not focus, focus. Yeah. How many times do you have to say before going into a meeting, I've got to focus on this one? <laughs> We're good. Okay. Open yeah. the door. Get in the room. Okay. Um, Mike, I am I would love to talk to you for far longer, but unfortunately time is working against us. In terms of uh, people wanting to find out more about you, 
um, yes. uh, get in touch, and of course with uh, Luxonic itself. How could people do those things? We are pretty active on social media, especially on LinkedIn. That's probably our most um, active social media platform. So if you can find Luxonic uh, on LinkedIn. Uh, feel free to reach out to me, Mike Wasilowski, as well on LinkedIn. Um, you can always email us, info at luxonic.ca. Um, visit our website. It is due for a facelift, and we will be updating it very soon. So um, look for that in the coming months. Um, and, you know, you can also pop by our office if you're in Saskatoon. We're an innovation place and always happy to put headsets on heads and show people the future of medicine. 100%. I have to say to this day of all the rooms I've been into in, you know, in Canada, the mm -hmm. day coming into your office and strapping the headset on you guys guiding me around and explaining everything. Um, it is still one of my favorite days of learning and understanding how this can make a real difference, how this can really scratch the itch. And a bit like talking about that product thing just now, if you're, mm -hmm. if there isn't an itch to scratch, don't reach out for it. Scratch the itch yeah. first and then look at the other things. Mike, huge thank you for joining us here on Dan. Startup Phil. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Startup Phil is brought to you by Innovation Saskatchewan, helping grow the tech sector in our province and beyond, and is produced in partnership with Martin Charlton Communications at WeTellYourStories.ca. Our show is produced by me, Ariel Delorier, and our host, Dan Gold. Our theme music is from Gigi Riggs and Reactor Productions. Find out more about us and our guests at innovationplace.com slash startupville, and follow us on Twitter at Startupville Pod. And check us out on LinkedIn at Startupville Podcast. Remember to subscribe and review wherever you listen to podcasts. It really helps us rise up the ranks. See you next time on Startup Bell.